We were one of those families that Yudi was talking about because when Peter was diagnosed, um, um, you know, 13 years ago, because he's 15, um, I think another parent put it best who was in my uh, cohort. He said, no one told us anything. <laughs> and that was true. There was very little information at that time. And it was FAA that really gave us, uh, through us, the, through us the, the lifesaver. And um, I remember very much, uh, you know, that first conversation I had with uh, Yudi's uh, late husband, Bob, who really saved us because we called, I was desperate, and he invited me to a meeting, and he offered me materials, and there was someone who, who could share. And so this, this group has really been a lifesaver for us. So we're so delighted to be here after... Um, you know, these 13 years of traveling down this road to share what we had learned. Um, Peter was diagnosed uh, when he was two and a half. Originally, his diagnosis was moderate autism. After six months of ABA, it was changed to severe autism with dyspraxia and uh, a number of other things, okay. Tourette's and other uh, diagnoses. Um, and Peter uh, wanted to share with you uh, his journey to communication because it's been a it's been a long and winding road for us. Uh, so, uh, as he says, I have traveled many roads on my track. Okay, we started this presentation. I told him, Peter, you have a presentation to give in eleven days. We started this eleven days ago. I said we should start writing it. Let's start now. Okay, your presentation to uh, or to, uh, to other families of children with autism. And the parents are coming to hear from you and three other typing teens because they want to know how to best help their, their children learn to communicate. And Peter said, I am overwhelmed with the responsibility. How do I start? And he picked all these pictures. OK, I, I, uh, uh, I said, don't worry. Let's just start with the familiar. So what was your first memory? Uh, Peter said, I remember I couldn't do anything. I felt so helpless. Now, I, I left you with the original typing because I want you to see. Um, I, it's sort of a visual of what dyspraxia looks like. You'll see Peter, his, when I watch him on the keyboard, he's actually spelling almost everything correctly, but he has trouble hitting the right key. So sometimes he'll circle around, sometimes he'll hold the key too long, and you'll see the imprint of that there. So he says, I really couldn't express anything except food choices with PEX cards. I enjoyed that, but I couldn't ex express um, how I was feeling um, or seeing or uh, wanted to do. The cards were just never quite right. Then I remember feeling uh, very, uh, very good, earning goodies, pleasing you and Belinda, that's his uh, tutor, by just uh, putting sentences together with Velcro. It was fun. I got to understand how language is put together. I also uh, yearned to get nice words out, like how much I thanked and loved all of you, but I didn't have the right Velcro words there available. It was really frustrating. You were always saying you loved me, and I wanted to shout back, I love you even more, but I couldn't get the words to come out. Earnestly hoped you knew how was I going to encourage you to keep trying if I remain defensively in this silent world? And he picked this picture to show how he felt at those days. So then I asked him, do you remember all our play with RDI and floor time? You would be smiling and running to me. So you were indeed expressing your joy then. And I could see that you loved me. And Peter answered, I feel that all those games were like Cinderella at the ball. I had so much fun getting to play with you and Dai, that's his aunt, and the girls from PCDA. You were the most creative mom on the planet. I especially loved really the stuffed animals talking like Charmander and Pooh. I didn't like some games like Robot Mom because they made me work hard. But they did force me to talk or gesture, which was good practice. Did, by the way, did you order the sandwiches for those games? I mean, for rehearsing, earnestly making sandwiches with the other kids with autism, like Sean when we'd get together for play dates? This was a real conversation. 
So I said, are you talking about the silent waiter game or making sandwiches while holding hands or something else? Peter said, I mean getting sandwiches for the stuffed animals, the plastic food. So I said, oh, I bought that plastic food a long time ago for Judy and Jeffrey. Those are two of his older siblings. He's number six in the lineup to play with when they were just toddlers. I, I just saved it. And Peter said, good use recycling. <laughs> So I said, I'm just so delighted that you enjoyed all those games and that you even remember the names of them, like Robot Mom. Do you remember specific people like Phyllisy, Stephanie, Donna? What was the name of the PCBA girl, the one beginning with CH? Peter said, Cherise, Chantal. And I said, wow, you remember those names. Anything you remember especially? And Peter said, good warmth and sweet affection. I learned a lot from them about joy and love. So much love to hear that. Peter, you are the best encourager. So Peter said, same with my teachers at school. The best ones were fun and playful with a good sense of humor. That's the one on the right. Um, the worst were like drill sergeants, the one on the left. But I, but I had very few because you fired them. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> um, I said, Peter, tell your audience more about your journey with language. After the Velcro sentences, I believe we went with the springboard. That's an augmentative communication device. And then the Vantage, that's a more complicated one that has more grammar in it, with Cindy Cotier. And Peter said, yes, those devices were good, but cumbersome. Took forever to express just simple things. Not very satisfying, but a good bridge to practice language, especially liked, uh, liked very much the Vantage teaches grammar. So I said, I had made a keyboard available to you for years. Do you remember how you used to type for food like Jello and chips? And Peter said, yes, but it was hard because I couldn't get my fingers to hit the keys. I knew how to read and spell from the books you read, me, read to me, but sadly, I couldn't express it. So I asked, were the books we uh, were reading too easy for you? Was that also frustrating, or was the level appropriate? Peter said, the books were charming, but of course I prefer the stories we use now. You're good at finding great authors. I really love the text we use now. Uh, you never bored me. You should be a good principal because you find good teachers and good curriculum. <laughs> So I said, thanks so much, Peter. You have no idea how gratified I feel that we hit it right for you. I'm sure you realize that it was teamwork with the Lord as our guide. And Peter said, yes, thanks be to God. So what did Darlene do that unlocked the keyboard for you? Um, and believe me, before, we always had a keyboard here with uh, the jello and crackers he was typing for, but every time it felt like it was new that I would have to help him with the first few words. He'd warm up, he'd sort of get it, and then he seemed to forget it. And I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Well, Peter said, when she came, it was the most dramatic moment of my life. She picked up my hand, said, I believe in you, um, uh, and then God took over. He made the darn fingers hit the right keys. <laughs> the word finally flowed from my brain through my hand. I cannot express the feeling of joy and relief. Said, so I remember that session vividly as well. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Do you remember what happened to Papa? Peter said he felt so thrilled he fell off of his chair, <laughs> which he did. I said, what, was, what, um, what is it that a good facilitator does to help the words to flow out of your brain into the hand onto the screen? Mm -hmm. Peter said, um, you just believe in the person that they have something to say. You don't give up. You keep giving more support until the person gets energized warmed up 
Then you relinquish control to the person as you sense intent. How important to not be afraid to jump in with you. How was writing for you with a pen or pencil? Peter said, it was painful and frustrating because by the time I formed the letter, okay. I was drained, so I lost my word. What does this ability mean for you to type? How has it changed your life? Peter said, of course, my whole life has changed, so I can communicate nearly anything I want. I'm a sapling that now has sunshine and water. Of course, now I can say, I love you and thank you and praise God. God really shined a light and made a path for you out of the jungle of autism. And Peter says, of course he did. He loves me. God loves everyone. <laughs> say, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay, Mom, can we go hiking instead of biking? I guess it just depends on Stephen, I guess, but I prefer hiking. <laughs> my father ever best. Luke is in the audience right there in the same green jacket. Luke, one moment bright joy, next moment full of anger. Luke, I love you ever more. Or any ever. He made up a new word. Um, his uh, One of his um, uncle friends had made us a lobster dinner when we visited him, and, and so he made up a riddle for his uncle. I'm a space monster, fiery red, mad. I may be lightweight, but hard, sharp plated, and pointy clawed. I'm tough to chew, hard to crack, big ugly insect that I am. Don't eat me, leave me alone. <laughs> so the answer was a lobster. <laughs> Okay, last one. Okay, I will give you this one. Um, uh, no, uh, but um, uh, if you are into, if anyone wants more poems or anything, you can always um, uh, come to me and give me your email address, and I'll send you some. He, um, this was called the the prompt of this was um, what would make the world a better place. So Peter wrote, the green stillness of an oak forest, the sound of birds singing, squirrels chattering and crickets chirping, the sun upon the mountain tops, the blueness of the sky, these make the world beautiful. The taste of chocolate chip ice cream, the swirl of a hot jacuzzi, the thrill of a roller coaster, the joy of riding my bike, these make the world a fun place. The warmth of my mom's smile, the chattering laughter of my little nephews, the gruff nod of my grandfather, my tall brothers playing card games, my little brother sharing a snack. My papa went in a good mood. These make the world a warm, loving place. <laughs> you and I can be friends. We can plant a garden, make the earth a garden that we tend with loving care, with room for everyone to be free to be themselves, loved for what they are. That would make the world a better place. Uh, 
I saw. Okay, <laughs> something dark. Did I go? Hers, 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 my brain was a theater of person shock and uh, give me friends against the girls. When I was a very small boy, I became to be a student of someone she studied me on the road to something dangerous was done by others but Soma was early to tell me that I am smart and she was my surgeon from the surgeon. I learned myself the nonsense of someone to build in incentive from of communication much from that time is difficult to get from because I was sending to different speech. Going to school was hard, hard at first. No one believed in my typing of so they learned I was in and don't dreaming of when I could be concerned. A true student was my only thought when does it come? Darling came into the school. She showed them that I could spell a ball. Other things the teachers started to take me strong as a student. Now I am strong studying with classical books. The future in scary you turning thing. Tough times are had my typing thing will give me an person well I sort it out. She has started That's typing a few years ago, maybe three, three, yeah, yeah, maybe four. Um, the first year was just, you know, slightly practicing and finding a few of us to do it with her. Okay, I'm just gonna go to what you wrote. Okay, this is this is this. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I'm gonna read what you wrote. Oh, ooh, that was instant karma. Sorry. It's not it. 
you want to stand or do you want to sit while I'm reading it? Sit, 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 stand. Okay, you can stand. You can stand right there while I read. Um, that's good. You can stay right here so they can see you because it's your words. All right. Hello to all. My name Bye. is Tony Nelly, and I am here to tell you a bit about myself. I go to school in Studio City and really love to learn a recent discovery. My body makes it extremely difficult to be focused in the classroom, but I fight every day because to be a balanced, educated person who can share ideas with others is my big dream in life. My goal is empowering myself through intellect and true order. I remember thinking that however severe my autism, I would continue to learn and find what it is that makes me this way. I am running a race every day, like I am on a treadmill on top speed going nowhere. My brain is a trickster who throws banana peels in front of me, just like in the cartoons. I live every day in my own world. It is lonely because no one truly understands how I think and feel. I can't always control my voice and body. Often I get very frustrated. I get escalated very quickly and have to just let my brain calm down. Before typing, I was in an oppressive place. My days were juggling thoughts that I had. An example would be until typing, I just pretended to have what other people look like they have. I played in my mind. If I hadn't, if I hadn't started typing, I would probably only be doing things like preying on people as though I was only a mammal of the wild. Some questions I have been asked. What is it like having autism? Having autism is probably like you being the only one who is different in your school. It is hard to keep my mind calm. My mind is processing so much information that it's hard to focus on one thing. It is hard to control just being still. I need lots of support to get through my day, like getting ready. I zone out in my room and have a hard time appropriately choosing my clothes. What kind of music do you listen to? I like lots of different kinds. Anything from pop to classical. My favorite group is The Wanted. Pink is my favorite individual singer. I've recently started listening to the music from the musical Les Miserables. Do people treat you differently since you have autism? I think people only inherently ignorant of autism do. My family is doing a better job at it now that I communicate. <laughs> what makes things harder for you? I have to plan ahead for outings, otherwise I get highly unregulated. Trying to be normal is impossible. What are the positives of having autism? I have to be politically active in helping others like me. It's a blessing I have autism. I, I, am, I am an empath. I feel others' feelings. Treating people kindly is my message. What is your favorite pastime? She said it is probably going, probably going for walks or horse riding. Did I make a mistake? Did you want to tell me something else? No? Is it okay? Okay. Uh, what type of schools do you go to? Right now, I attend Emerson Academy. It is such an amazing place where people accept me as an equal. For the first time, I am doing age-appropriate academics. <laughs> Somebody asked her once, can you still live a fun, long life? <laughs> she typed, I think I can. <laughs> uh, what do you want to impart with people? Or oh, what do you want to impart? Please make people like me your friends. Um, what, oh, that was it. And then what are 
what are my hopes and dreams for the future? In the future, I hope to have a boyfriend, a house, some horses, friends, and go to parties regulated without AIDS prompting. <laughs> I'll get independence and respect for working really hard to achieve my goals, juggling my autism with having a normal life, emboldening myself to try various kinds of things that challenge me. As the writer Goth says, whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Okay. Asking how we know that we exist. It is a profound question and a very important one, but I disagree with his answer. I would change the quote to, I communicate, therefore I am. In order to truly exist, it is not enough to merely think our own thoughts. We have to be able to share them with a, another person and have our thoughts acknowledged. Before I could type, I listened a lot because I couldn't speak. I read everything around me, books, TV credits, the LA Times, and I thought about some of what I heard and read. But I was a prisoner of my thoughts because I could not communicate them to anyone else. Much of the time, I wasn't sure I existed. <coughs> to start, I'm sorry. when I first met Darlene, okay. I realized that the world of communication... <coughs> when I turn the Instead of an observer. 
All that engagement encourages me to focus, to attend, and to participate even more. There are challenges. One challenge is that typing is a slow process. And in our multitasking society, it is difficult to convince people to slow down enough to have a conversation with me. Once they do, however, they always are glad they did so. Over the years, I think that I have taught many people to stop rushing and truly listen. In addition, there is the challenge of persuading people that what I type is actually my thought and not my facilitators. <coughs> this is among the greatest challenges of FC. I am working hard to become an independent typer, but in the meantime, I focus on my supporters and try to ignore the detractors. <laughs> now that I can direct my own life, the sky is the limit.